Great. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you for giving me the honor of addressing you all today. And also, thank you to the board for all the work you've done and all the work we got to do together over the past couple of years. Uh, I'm Esther Offenberg, the current UJS president, as said. So I would like to start by highlighting only a few of our many successes, achievements, and moments of beauty I, my team, and students all across the country got to experience in just the last six months. In Freshers' Week in September, we visited 57 campuses out of our 67 campuses, gave out 1,500 goodie bags, which we named Schlepp bags, and have had see, and, and saw five new JSOGs um, created or revived, which are Lincoln, Huddersfield, Portsmouth, Plymouth, and Newcastle. At our annual UJS National Summit, which provides leadership training to GSOC committees and Jewish student activists, we brought 120 elected student leaders from all around the country together. We pioneered brand new counter anti Semitism training for student unions and university leadership and have already delivered training at over 35 institutions. No more are we reactionary approaching universities and student unions after there has been an incident. We are now proactive, building relationships and with stakeholders all over the country so that, God forbid, if an anti-Semitic incident happens at a university or in a student's union, not only do we have the relationships to resolve the situation, but through our detailed training, university leaders have a greater understanding of their Jewish students' experience and understand modern-day anti-Semitism for what it is. The last year hasn't come without anti-Semitic incidents on campus, whether it be academics teaching conspiracies around the Jewish community, incidents of Holocaust trivialization at student parties, or attempts to shut down dialogue around Israel on campus. But the work done by Jewish students to combat Jew hatred is remarkable. We just need to look to Holocaust Memorial Day, where together with Jewish students, we organized, facilitated, and supported events, speakers, memorial services, and so much more on 53 campuses, which have run since Holocaust Memorial Day, will run all throughout this month and into March. Engaging over 7,000 students, Jewish and non-Jewish. It is so important to take all the messages of hashtag we remember and hashtag never again, which we hear all the time, seriously. As Jewish students, we know our unique responsibility when it comes to Holocaust education. We will be the first generation where we, we, where we will be bringing up our children without living survivors. We are slowly approaching a time where we will have to shift our whole understanding of commemoration culture so that we can truly say never again and be confident that this message is reaching everyone around us with the same impact as before. I'm so proud that our students, our Jewish students, are leading on that and carrying our history into the next generation. It is stories like these, of which I've just scratched the surface, that we should be hearing and reading about in our newspapers, our shuls and community gatherings, or even just at the Friday night dinner table. Jewish students are doing an incredible job on campus, bringing Judaism to life, what it means to be Jewish, and in every, possible, every other possible angle which we could be indulging in. Mental health, LGBT+, social action, interfaith, Israel, you can find it all, and numerously so. In the same vein, and I'm allowed to say this because I'm president, UJS is doing an incredible job. Our team has been working tirelessly all year and will continue to do so to support and represent Jewish students all around the country, following on from the countless amazing teams and students before us. Many of you in this room will have contributed, contributed to UJS successes over the past decades. UJS is in its 100th year, going on 101. We're the oldest and original union of Jewish students in the world. And there's a reason the rest of the Jewish student unions in the world look to us. That is the narrative I want to be hearing at the Sunday Gossip Brunch. We need to bring some proportionality to how the Jewish community talk about campus, focusing on the many positives Jewish students are experiencing every day on and off campus, which outweigh the negatives by far. And it is up to all of us, that is me and you, as leaders of our community to change those narratives. We are all here because we care, because we love our community and want to create change, make our communities the best they can be. Of course, it can be fun to tear others down, criticize what that other shul organization did. Oh, we would have done that differently. 
You know what would be more fun? Listening to students and young people. Don't just hear what we say. Listen. UJS sends the largest number of delegates per organization to the Board of Deputies. We want to be here. We want to be in this room and the many other Jewish communal rooms of this country. I always hear the question, how can we attract more young people? Why are there no youngsters here? Let us be part. Be part of the decision making. Consider our thoughts and voices and really include them. Only then can our spaces truly flourish and be sustainable. And that goes for the many diverse voices in our community. We are not just one narrative. We are many woven into one. As UJS, we are beyond proud to represent so many young people at such an exciting and crucial time in their lives. A lot of students are not members of the many organizations in this room. They opt out, don't know, or choose otherwise. UJS is the only organization that is the voice of Jewish students. We are leading, defending, enriching Jewish life on and off campus around the whole country every single day. Whether you're a student on a campus like Leeds or Birmingham with over a thousand students or Hull or Coventry with just about 10, somewhere where we fund the Hillel House or your weekly lunch and learns, or is really a student on any of the other 67 campuses where we support over 10,500 Friday night dinners every year. I just want to say that number again, 10,500. It's incredible. And I love visiting every single one of them. We are there with financial support, non-stop campus visits, nurturing, promoting and celebrating students everywhere. Without UJS, student life would cease to exist in some places or be significantly harder in others. And who will catch our students then? I don't mean for this to sound glorifying, but it's important to remember that UJS and Jewish students are a core part of our community, just like the board and the many other Jewish organizations that empower us so much. You're about to have the chance to ask me anything, but if you only take one thing away from today, it's that it's everybody's responsibility in here to ensure the continuity of strong Jewish life on campus, UJS, and our many shared successes. Thank you. And Esther's very happy to take questions. Gary Mond, uh, JNF UK, Vice Chairman of Defence Division. Esther, that was a fantastic speech, and I really applaud all the work that you and your team are doing. It's tremendous. Thank you. My question relates to something you said near the end of your speech, which was that uh, many members of UGS are not really involved in other organisations represented in this room. I'm wondering if anything could be done for students who are about to leave university to make them familiar with the various organizations, particularly some of the non-synagogal bodies like World Jewish Relief, uh, UJIA, and of course the JNF, which I represent, so that there can be some continuity in their links with uh, the Jewish world having left the university and will no longer be in the UJS, uh, that they can actually get to know a lot more about the various other Jewish community organizations that they could get involved in. And of course the JLGB, which the president represents, for example. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yes, that's a really important question. So I think on the one hand, it's, it comes down to the, just the narratives in our community of how we bring our children up, of, of where we see opportunities for them and how they see their future in our Jewish community. So on the one hand, yes, it's how can we engage more in our, in our shuls, in our community kind of environments, and really creating those opportunities. And I think just the same applies to all of the other like non-synagogue bodies, as you were saying. It's about having those opportunities and really giving young people a chance to, to take part. And that doesn't just mean organizing a young professional drinks situation, um, just so there's a potential dating opportunity, um, but really, really letting them be part because especially coming out of university, everyone has so much drive. You're really, at university, you get to discover all your all your really interests in like what, what social action you like, what, what drives you, what are your passions and we have so much to offer in our Jewish community so I think that should be more reflected so that we can really grab those opportunities. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, James Harris, uh, Union of Jewish Students. I'd just like to thank Esther on behalf of Jewish students across the UK on the work you've done for the past uh, six months and you know, towards the uh, 
end of this year. Um, I just have two questions. Um, first, how are UJS engaging with students' unions long term uh, after delivering counter anti Semitism training, uh, especially given the recent reforms of the National Union of Students? Uh, and number two, how can UJS and the board work together in combating anti Semitism not just at students' unions but also in university spheres as well? Thank you. Um, so, for your first question, uh, Yes, so NUS, for anyone that doesn't know, the National Union of Students is the um, kind of umbrella union body for all student unions in the country um, and had major reforms at their last conference in March. So what that actually means for us is that a lot of the power that NUS had before is now transferred down to student unions, which is much better for us engaging with them and for Jewish students because uh, we have, have a direct link, especially through the anti-Semitism, counter-anti-Semitism training that we're already running um, and really getting to benefit and use those relationships much more uh, and being able to, to enact change, positive change for Jewish students on campus. Um, and what was your second question again? Sorry. Uh, it was uh, how can the board and UJS work together to combat anti-Semitism in unis as well as student unions? In unis? Or yeah. Unions? Yeah. Well, so, so um, I mean, our counter-antisemitism training doesn't just apply to student unions. We meet with vice-chancellors, vice university staff, really always invite everyone to the meeting, and um, usually they take up uh, those opportunities, which is obviously great, as student union teams often change on a yearly basis, but university staff and vice-chancellors stay for longer. So it's really good to have that more ingrained um, support and connection. Um, but, yeah, I mean, we're already working with the board on many things, and continuing to work with the board on many things related around anti-Semitism on campus and um, on and off campus. Just last week we all met with, um, well, Chris Skidmore is not anymore, but um, the <laughs> university's minister also to talk about uh, the experience and situation for Jewish students on campus. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Susan Pascoe, near Israel Community. Thank you for the fantastic work UJS is doing. I wanted to raise the issue of Israel Apartheid Week, um, which is planned for March. This year, they're planning it under the banner of United Against Racism. Well, we're all united against racism, but it gives a veneer of respectability to what they're doing, which is Israel Apartheid Week. Uh, you mentioned you're establishing good, re good um, relationships with the leaders of the universities, which is so important. I'm wondering whether you're being proactive in raising with vice chancellors and other leaders that Israel Apartheid Week is unacceptable in any universities and if you can give your views of, of the way forward. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, we definitely talk about the whole issue of uh, BDS and Israel Apartheid Week with them. Um, actually now for this upcoming Israel Apartheid Week in March, um, I want to share a really exciting thing that UJS and Jewish students are actually running. We're running a Spring into Israel month where um, Jewish students will have a chance to invite speakers, events, workshop sessions, everything around Israel from political, cultural, social, educational, really anything you could think of. Um, and bringing the beauty of Israel on campus to life, um, not just online, but really showing that we are strong, we are lively, we are there, and that will be running throughout the whole of March, um, also to support Jewish students, but also just show we are here. Yeah, thank you. Uh, David Fox, Stanet and District Reform. Uh, great speech, thank you very much. Um, the question is, um, I was wondering how much um, you've considered formalizing the links between the network of JSOCs across the university campuses and the local synagogue communities. Um, and the reason I ask that is um, there is a, there is a potential two-way benefit here. From the perspective of the synagogue communities, certainly the, the smaller communities, they benefit hugely from the albeit temporary influx of young members into the community that can provide and, and do things for the community that existing members can't do. And then looking at the other way, from the student perspective, it gives them an opportunity to expand their activities outside the, the very intense environment of the university campus. And so from a p perspective of mental well-being, it can have a, a very positive uh, benefit. Thank you. 
Um, yes, really important question. So I think that really depends on the campus and sometimes just availability and distance. I went for, to Birmingham, for example, for university, and I was very active in my um, local shul, Central Birmingham Shul. Excited to see you all at the regional weekend. Um, but uh, we do always encourage students to really engage with their local shul. A lot of small JSOCs actually also do that. Um, but thank you again for raising the point. We'll obviously encourage them again. Uh, but it is always a really great connection to have, not just have your local Jewish student community, but also your local Jewish community and really expand, expand that. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. There we go, yeah. Esther, thank you. Um, I just wanted to say on behalf of myself, those of us at the top table and all of us on the Defence Division, how much we've enjoyed working with you this year um, and we'll continue working with you until your successor comes on board later in the, in the year. Um, for deputies to understand, the UJS president only gets a year in post and um, so they ha they're charged with both delivering against their manifesto in a very short space of time, but also continuing the good work of um, UJS. And it's um, a pretty big challenge, so I congratulate you on doing that. Um, you mentioned that uh, UJS has the largest body of deputies, um, and I think you have 11 or 12, de 12 deputies. Um, and so I wonder if all of those of you in the room who are UJS deputies can stand up so that we can all see you and recognize you. Koski. Brilliant, thanks. Stand up. <laughs> so um, I just want to thank all of you, both um, the deputies and, um, and Esther, for all of the work that you do with us. Um, we very much enjoy working with you, listening to you, as you say, and learning from you. Um, and it's great to see so many of the UJS deputies standing for and um, getting, standing for division and getting involved. And I hope that that continues um, well into the future. Many thanks. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well you done.